I'm recording. All right. Hello and welcome to the Admin Bar, the community that helps you streamline your process, sharpen your skills, and demand higher paying projects. My name is Kyle Van Dusen from Ogle Web Design just outside of Fort Worth, Texas. And with me, as always, is my co-host, Matt Siebert from Matthew Siebert Design. What's going on, Matt? Hey, man. I'm doing well. Uh, let's, uh, let's get right into this one. All right, let's do it, because today we are talking about everyone's favorite topic, <laughs> terms and conditions, yay! <laughs> actually, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this because this is something that is actually super necessary and something that I don't feel really comfortable with, you know, guiding my clients, explaining to my clients. I know they don't understand it, so uh, me trying to help them is vital because if I don't understand it, they really don't understand it. So I think today's episode is going to help us out a lot in that. And it's actually an opportunity to take these necessary items and turn them into part of your recurring revenue model, which I think is pretty exciting. And you can always get me excited when you add to my care plan. So uh, that will be a good part of it. So today we're joined by Hans and Donata. Uh, they are from Termageddon. And they're going to be talking to us quite a bit about their product and how they found or created a really, really nice solution to get all these legal documents on your site and your client's site. And before I throw it to them for an introduction, I do want to say that today's show is sponsored by Funnel Packs. Funnel Packs are pre-built marketing funnels for your digital agency. Whether you're an agency owner, solo designer, developer, or marketer, Funnel Packs have been created for you and can help you set up er, and can be set up on your website in under an hour. Everything is completely editable so you can adapt the content, the design, the layout, everything to suit your audience. Break out of the feast and famine cycle and start generating more leads with Funnel Packs. You can learn more at funnelpacks.co. And I want to thank Funnel Packs very much for sponsoring the show. So let's get on to the show at hand. Uh, Hans and Donata, why don't y'all give us a brief introduction and, and uh, kind of your background and how you found yourself on the admin bar today. Great. Yeah. How about you start? Okay. Um, so I'm Donata. I'm the president of Termageddon. I'm the uh, lawyer of the group, um, so I'm the one who uh, keeps track of all the new laws, makes sure that all the policies are updated. Um, I wrote all of the questions and I wrote all of the policies for Termageddon. Um, and I also uh, work on supervising our sales team and you know, kind of getting us to the next level and working with our agency partners. You wanna talk a little bit about your background maybe? Sure. Um, so like I said, I'm a lawyer. <laughs> um, I practice mostly in um, business, corporate law and privacy law. Um, I'm a certified information privacy professional um, from the IAPP, which is the um, board that certifies attorneys and other professionals on privacy. Um, I'm also very involved in the Illinois State Bar Association um, and teaching other attorneys about privacy law, about the general data protection regulation, um, and all of those things. Um, and I actually ended up, um, you know, Hans and I came up with the idea for Termageddon um, because, you know, Hans is more on the marketing side and agency side, and I'm more on the legal and privacy side. So when we kind of combined forces, that's how we got Termageddon. It's a match made in heaven. Very I will cool. say that you're <laughs> extremely overqualified to be on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we are wearing sweatpants on our bottom half of those yeah, videos. So <laughs> that, that, that helps a little bit. Bring us back to reality real quick. So, um, so yeah, my name is Hans. I'm the vice president of Termageddon. Uh, my brat background, I've been running a web agency for seven years uh, in downtown Chicago about a dozen employees. Uh, the company was called buildthis.com. Um, I actually sold that company April 1st, uh, 2019, uh, which is about a month and a half or so from this recording, um, uh, so that I could go full-time Termageddon. Um, so, you know, I come from the agency world um, and Donata and I were, were engaged, um, if you can't tell from how close we are in this <laughs> podcast, Congrats but uh, uh, we, when we got to talking about the program, I was just kind of expressing some of my frustrations being a web agency owner and constantly getting the question from my clients, like, what should I do for privacy policy? And I'm just sitting there, I'm like, I don't, I'm not an attorney, you know? And, and it always gets, it always gets asked three days before site launch. I always say three days before site launch, you'll get the, what should I do for a privacy policy question? And, and then sure enough, you know, then you wait two weeks for the attorney to write something or for them to go figure out how they're going to get an answer to it. So 
turn web agencies, plain and simple. Um, it's a means for web agencies to communicate the value of privacy policies in terms of conditions <clears throat> and some additional policies. Uh, we have very straightforward pricing. Um, the dashboard's built really for web agencies, um, and, uh, and it gives agencies the ability to make recurring revenues um, from this program uh, with minimal, minimal effort uh, pos- uh, implemented. Yeah, and I mean that's that's true. Kyle and I have both set it up. Uh, we've tested it out, and holy cow, it's a breeze to get through. It's uh, it's not complicated at all. Anybody can do it, and you know, once it's done, it's done. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Um, it was very difficult from my end to not make it complicated. Obviously, when you're a lawyer, you just want to ask all these crazy questions that nobody knows the answers to, and, and things like that. So. I think our one of our main goals was to make sure that it's easy to understand and it's easy to use and it's easy to set up in the first place because um, that's one of our main concerns because people aren't going to adopt a program where they think, okay, well, privacy policies and terms and conditions, it's already such a scary topic. But if I go and I try to generate those and then I have to answer like 50 questions that are very confusing, there's no way that that's going to work for anyone. Right. You know, so that was our goal too, is to make sure that it's easy to understand and easy to use. Yeah. And I do want to take some time and kind of walk through exactly how this is all set up. Most people that listen to this, like all three of them already develop websites. So they'll understand if we talk a little bit technically about how this works, uh, you know, from the back end. But first I will say, like, if, if you're still single out there, Take whatever your weakness is and then go marry somebody that's really good. That's like a really good so y'all just formed an awesome partnership. So that's great. So there it is it is a true um it is a true like order and chaos type situation. <laughs> like true. she's just everything is black and white for her and everything is just grayscale for me. Like <laughs> well, my wife's a counselor and I have all kinds of mental health issues. <laughs> yeah, there you there go. You go. Yeah. Yeah, that works too. <laughs> so, all right. So let's let's kind of start back at the beginning. So, what you know, there's like you said, there's different kind of policies and stuff your website needs. So, why are I guess Donata, this is a great question for you. Why are all these kinds of terms so important on your website, especially now today more than ever? Yeah. So there's a couple different policies that we offer, and I can you know, different policies are important for different reasons. So before, before we jump into that, should we note what Termageddon is? Um, should we just know it's a pri- it's a policy generator for websites, but what's special about our program is that instead of copying and pasting text onto a privacy policy page, you copy and paste an embed code. And that allows us at Termageddon to automatically update the policies whenever the laws change. This creates um, a need for for um, a recurring revenue stream to be generated um, for to invoice clients, you know, so that we can constantly stay up to date with the laws and the changes to the laws. And the web agency gets to be the company that makes some recurring revenues from it. Um, uh, so that's that's our big, you know, shtick is that we automatically update the policies whenever the laws change. So. Yeah, that's more of the agency side of things. I mean, yes, you you want things to automatically update so that. There's a reason for charging recurring fees and stuff like that. But from my perspective, you want it to automatically update because that's really the most important part of things, right? So if you have a document on your website, like let's say you have a privacy policy and then the law changes, that privacy policy is pretty much useless at Mm -hmm. that point, right? Or it's going to get you into even more trouble than, you know, if the law didn't change or if you didn't have it updated. So we do offer a couple different kinds of policies. So the first one would be privacy policy. I think this is the one that pretty much everyone knows about why it's important and you know what's going on with all of that. But a privacy policy basically says what information you collect on the website, what you do with that information, who you share that information with. So, you know, with all the recent scandals and stuff, like, you know, Facebook, for example, or other companies that don't adequately disclose what they do with your information, who they sell it to and what they do with it. Um, you know, that's the, the importance of the privacy policy. And privacy policies are actually required by law as well. Um, you know, there's a California law that requires it. There's also European Union law that requires it. And actually there's, you know, all of these states now are coming out with new laws, um, you know, which is going to make things extremely complicated if there's not a federal law. But, you know, a lot of the state laws, let's say, 
propose uh, a new privacy law, right? So a lot of what happens with that, people say, oh, well, I'm not in Texas. I don't have to care about that. Well, actually, the laws are don't discuss where the business is located. It's where the person using your website is located. Right. So, you know, a lot of that is going to apply to a lot more businesses that are not necessarily located in that particular state. So that's kind of the privacy policy side of things. The terms and conditions side of things is the, you know, let's say you have third party links on your website. Let's say you're selling things. Let's say you have, you know, downloads on your website. Let's say you have any kind of your own intellectual property on your website, like your logo and, and trademarks and things like that. You have to be able to protect those things. Um, so, you know, it's a lot about protecting those things, limiting your liability in case somebody goes to another website that you link to, you know, shipping policies, returns, cancellations, refunds, things like that. Um, we also offer disclaimers, um, which are great for, you know, companies that do um, health related blogging or doctors, um, also attorneys, things like that. You know, companies that sell products that might be seen as potentially medication. Um, so all of that is very important for the disclaimer. And then we also um, offer an end user license agreement, which is essentially for apps um, that you would download and that protects your app as well. So I guess the best way to say it as to why these are important in the first place is, you know, make sure you're not fined by the government for not following the law. Um, you know, make sure you're protecting your company and yourself uh, from other people, from liability, you know, things like that. And also make sure that you can establish a sense of trust with the people that go on your website. Because now a lot of, you know, this wasn't the case before, but now a lot of people are actually very interested in that stuff. So where before 99% of the consumers wouldn't even know what a privacy policy is, now that number is a lot lower. People actually do know what it is and they want to see you have one because they care about their information and they care about what you do with it. So it actually, there's been quite a few studies done um, showing that, you know, a commitment to privacy actually helps um, reduce your sales cycle, uh, helps you close uh, deals faster, helps increase um, brand engagement and things like that. Um, so it's, it's a lot of different reasons as to why that stuff is important. But every business should have that because it's just a smart thing to do. Yeah. When you see Mark Zuckerberg in front of Congress for two days straight getting grilled over basically these these <laughs> questions, you know, that raises everybody's consciousness about it. And of course, you know, I feel like the United States is always kind of a little step behind of where Europe's at. And Europe's already passed a lot of laws regarding all this. Right. And I know all that's going to be coming. Uh, and it's already coming and changing it all the time. But, you know, I only and I imagine most people listening only have like the base level understanding of everything you just talked about. You know? Yeah. And a lot of our understanding is like a he said, she said thing, too. Like sure. none of us are lawyers, so we don't actually know the, the real facts around it. Right. If I could if I could break it down to just how I translate it from like from an agency lens is <clears throat> a website when it collects what's called personally identifiable information, um, it needs in place protection, uh, privacy policy, for example. Um, and by personally identifiable information, that's just legal fancy talk for like if you're collecting information about a customer, like their contact email, their phone number. Um, uh, those are two great examples of what would be called personally identifiable information. So if you have a contact form with an email address, you need a privacy policy. And it's that simple. And that's the message that I was sharing back when I was running my agency is I kept it that simple. I was just like, look, your website, I, I'm here as a professional web agency knowing that this is personal information. So therefore, I'm advising you to get a privacy policy. And then from there, I offer, you know, you can go to an attorney or you can use a program like Termageddon. Um, you know, attorney expensive and you got to go back and get it updated term again, cheap, and it automatically updates when the laws change. So, yeah, uh, I think that's but I think it's good to offer options. You bring up another sure. point too the, the going back to the attorney later, like, yeah, that's going to be expen uh, expensive, but how would you even know when you need to update these things? Right. So unless your lawyer would tell you, you know, the, Hey, this law has updated, which most attorneys don't, you wouldn't even know that it would need to be updated unless somebody told you or unless you're track keeping track of that. I keep track of that stuff. 
most people don't have that kind of time or patience to keep track of that stuff because it's not just every single state. It's also other countries, you know, and every single country is you know coming out with their own opinions as to what something means. And it, are other countries going to follow that opinion? You don't know, you know, so it's, it's a lot of things to keep track of. And if you're running a business, you know, or running an agency, you don't really have time for that. Yeah, you know, right. and you don't want to do that. <laughs> you yeah. know, I mean, I'm sure most people don't really want to spend their, you know, two hours of free time that they get every day. You know, that precious time where you would rather spend time with your family looking up privacy law. Um, right. So that's really what our solution does. It, it keeps helps people step away from that and helps people do what they're supposed to be doing, what they want to be doing instead of having to keep track of all this stuff. Yeah, and I think I run into this kind of fundamental problem in this profession because we deal with something that is somewhat technical that most of the people we serve don't understand actually what we're doing. You know, so they have a, a little bit of knowledge of maybe, you know, websites in general, but they don't really understand what's going on. So we run into these different areas where we know a whole lot more than them, even if it's not something that's our responsibility. So I'm not a lawyer. I'm not, you know, when they, want me to design a website they're not saying i want you to write a you know a legally binding terms and condition <laughs> policy on my website but i know as the professional that that's something they need so i feel like on one hand uh i i really owe this to my clients to give them the best advice possible and on the other hand i don't want to waste time learning about every law and i don't want to pretend i'm something i'm not so I think this kind of solution gives you the best of both worlds where you can offer this advice and a solution to it kind of all in one thing, which I think is pretty exciting. So it le from a legal standpoint, um, let's say somebody didn't have a privacy policy in place and a con they had a contact form and uh, some of this information got stolen or hacked or whatever happened to it. Who's legally responsible for making sure that's in place on the website? Is it the, the client who owns the website or are they going to look back at their web developer and say, how come you didn't put this on there? So it kind of depends. There's two separate, <clears throat> there's kind of two separate questions there, right? One question is what happens if you don't have a privacy policy? And, and I think a good addition to that would be, and you get sued by the government for not having one um you know so let's say you were fined um so california would be able to fine you twenty five hundred dollars per visitor each time that a visitor comes on your website from california right so let's say you do get those fees or let's say you're infringing on the european union gdpr law that's four percent of your annual turnover up to 20 million dollars right that that's one aspect of it aspect number two is you know your website gets hacked you get you know a lot of personally identifiable information is stolen right so that those are two separate things you know generally the responsibility is on the business owner um to have all of the things in place right you know it's your business you have to make sure that you do things right however Right. If I'm the business owner and I didn't do this because I just wasn't feeling like it today, I'm going to try to place the blame on somebody else. Right. And I'm going to sue somebody who has more money than me so that I can, you know, essentially get out of this because it's not a good situation for anyone. So, you know, it, it all depends on what that person, what that business owner wants to do and what kind of person they are and, and whether or not they're fair or unfair you know, and what the courts would say about this, you know, it's it's kind of an issue that's not litigated very often, but it is possible that the agency itself would get sued as well. You know, the, the company owner could say, well, you're responsible for building my website. You, you know, in your contract, you said you were, you were the website's gonna comply with the law um, and then you didn't do it. You know, so it is possible for the agency to get sued as well. I mean, obviously we don't wanna be, scaring the bejesus out of anyone here you know yeah I, but you, but the fact is it's yeah. america you know this is america and, right. and anyone's gonna sue anyone for anything so i think what what i love is that the web agency just in, you have a document and email in an email hey i suggest you get a privacy policy and and to go back to what you guys were previously saying which was like man like how much knowledge do i need to have i say use it to your advantage that you don't have to say it out, out. 
data privacy expert, but what I do know is that that contact form is collecting an email address every single time you submit an inquiry. So therefore, I do know that you need one legally. Now, how you go about solving that is up to you. You know, you give out a, a couple options, hopefully term again being one of them, because we get free installs to all agencies. <laughs> Should I repeat that louder? We're, um, we're going to go into it. Free installs for all web agencies. Go to termagain.com. <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, you know, I think it's beneficial to just as, just to keep people in their lanes of their skill sets. And by saying, by being, a, you know, I think the biggest strength is just knowing when it's time to get a privacy policy. But what website are we building that doesn't collect a con an email address on a contact form? I've never built one in seven years that did not have an email address on a contact form. Right. So therefore, it's probably just best by default to just advise on getting privacy policies and terms and conditions as well. Um, terms and conditions covers the linking to third party websites. I mean, just about every website links over to Facebook or Twitter or something like that. So, you know, terms and conditions say, hey, if we link over to a website that's hacked, we're not responsible. You know, it's little things like that that just make it nice and easy. But I like when the web agency just kind of knows to say, hey, that's personally identifiable information. Therefore, I'm advising you do it. And then what you do as the web agency is you have it documented. When you expo expose this notice, and now you have it re registered. So if something bad in the future were to occur, you have, oh, look at this email. On this date at this time, this is exactly when I asked. And this is exactly when they said, I'm not paying for anything. Because they're probably wonderful clients. <laughs> <laughs> so I, th I think, you know, we've, we've kind of talked about how Termageddon solves this problem a little bit. But I think, you know, from my perspective, why I'm so interested in this product, and I think a lot of people might agree with it. So I'm going to slap my jaw for a minute and say it is basically, I don't want to spend a lot of time doing this. I don't have a lot of time to do this, but I want to make sure I'm delivering the best results possible for my clients and doing my duty to really help them. So the way Termageddon works is basically I could sign up uh, as an agency for free on termageddon.com like <laughs> and uh, uh, get my own, my own policies in place. But when I onboard clients, I can tell them, hey, this is something that needs to happen. This is a solution I already have baked into my process. It's, you know, it's all going to be taken care of. Uh, here's how it works. You know, it's going to be updated all the time and everything. And for me, having some kind of solution, and, and it's something I've been focusing a ton on my business this year, is putting processes in place so I can get through all these things smoother. And this is this is definitely one where, like, most of the time I just don't even mention it or, you know, I mean, it's just completely out of my process. So if we do need to do it, like I'll have a queue of, oh, I'm installing WooCommerce and I'm going to be taking credit cards and stuff. I should probably think about that on this one. Um, now, if I just have this into my stack, I think that's what makes this super valuable. So let's talk a little bit about how this actually works from a technical standpoint. Uh, let's start with, uh, you know, the free install you give to agency owners. How do they go about... Um, how do they go about getting that and what do they need to do to set up that policy before we get to the implementing it on your website part? Okay, great. Yeah, I'll take that one. Um, so um, you are a web agency. You've just been floored by Hans and Donata's interview um, at the <laughs> admin bar. Um, and you just can't wait to go to termageddon.com uh, and click register. Um, and what happens next is you fill out just the basic information, your name, your email, agree to the terms and conditions, and then you click enter. You have um, those on your website? Huh? Do you have uh do you have terms and conditions? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be really ironic if we didn't. Hey, terms and conditions are so important, deep. but we don't yeah. have them. <laughs> that would, that'd be really like a weird paradox going yeah. on. Like <laughs> But yeah, uh, so the web agency registers and then um we get notified uh that we get notified of every every registration. So when we see a you know business name owner at domain name.com we look up the domain name and if it's a if it's like a legitimate web agency we then on our site issue that agency access to the dashboard or the agency dashboard what that means is now when the lo web agency logs back in they see a couple changes um two changes to be exact one is that they get a free install for their own website and we use the terminology install because we literally cannot think of a better name so an install equals like a set of policies for one website so we are not about hidden prices like we are very straightforward with our pricing and we don't believe there's middle protection you either get protected or you don't so our flat fee covers or our, our, our one time our 
covers all the policies for your one entity. Um, so you have a free install as a web agency and you can go in and add that stuff. And I'll get to that, I'll expand on that in just a second here. The other thing you get with the web agency access is access to wholesale rates. So on our website, we disclose how we're 10 bucks a month or nine or a hundred bucks a year. And to the web agency, you're able to go into our, in, uh, to your dashboard and purchase installs at $4 a month or $38 and 40 cents a year. Um, so depending on how you want to integrate that into your maintenance plan or just go out and sell in bulk to your clients of the past. And for all of that, I'm available Hans at termageddon.com H A N S at termageddon.com you're more than welcome to uh reach out to me and figure out you know i help agencies all day long uh with selling to their client base and um, i will say uh, just just from oh, yeah. uh the user perspective if people are going and signing up right now what you did say is is getting people's free install that's something you do manually so don't try to just immediately go in there do it give hans a minute to get this all set up <laughs> yeah install, yeah give him a second Yes. And like, I do sleep like from like nine 30 to like six. So like, give me, you know, if you're applying at like three in the morning, like, wait, please, uh, <laughs> we need to make sure you're legit. Cause you already just submitted an inquiry at 3 AM, which has you already questionable <laughs> um, or really hardworking. Maybe it's that right. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so you have your free install as a web agency. You go and you click add install. And what you first fill out is what's called global information. This is information that applies to any of the policies that you create afterwards. So like, what is your business name? You know, that's going to go into each policy that you generate. So we ask that once rather than asking that for each and every policy. So once you fill out your global information, then you get insight into, then you have your like dashboard for that specific install. And then you can add all the policies. So you click add policy, you can choose privacy policy, terms of service, um, end user license agreement or disclaimer. So most people go right to privacy policy, great. We ask a series of questions um, based in, in um, the, the questionnaire changes based on how you answer the questions. Um, so for example, if you're collecting data or if you have traffic coming in from uh, citizens of Europe, uh, if you just answer yes to that, you get a whole bunch of extra questions. But um, really, when it's all said and done, um, a typical policy, um, it, w privacy policy terms and conditions, these all take about five minutes each. Um, and the global questions take about two minutes, three minutes. Um, if you say yes to GDPR, the GDPR question on your privacy policy, it's more like 10 minutes of answering questions. But hey, you know, an extra five minutes to protect yourself isn't that bad of an and, idea. And I no. set it up for my website. You gave me an install and then you gave us an install for the admin bars website. And I had Matt go set that up. So we'd just both be familiar with it. And and I I tried to play around with everything so I could dig into it and be familiar. And I don't think I spent 15 or 20 minutes on it and I was trying to spend time on it, you know? Yeah. Uh, but what I do like about the way you implemented this and, and for people that are kind of trying to picture it, it's, it's kind of like that onboarding wizard, like, um, like WooCommerce would even use where it's just taking you step by step through all those conditionals. So it's, it's just really easy to use. It's not some big, long giant form. You're just scrolling forever trying to find the end of, you're, you're being stepped through all these. So it's really easy to do. So, I appreciate the kind words. No, it's, it's awesome. I mean, that's, that's honestly how I feel about it. That, I kind of wish I didn't good. share how we're, I'm wearing sweatpants under this shirt. Right <laughs> okay. you're, you're good. I think that you're makes, presenting us so much more professional. So. <laughs> No, that's great. And I, and yeah, we do in sweatpants. For sure. <laughs> and and it, you know, uh, it is, it's been a constant communication between Donata and I, cause I'm, the, I'm the client, you know, I'm the web agency. I'm like, I need this stuff. Simple, simple, simple. And she's like, well, this is challenging, you know, right. so here the whole, the whole entire program, uh, without making any sacrifices, but we figured out the right way to ask the questions to make it as minimally invasive as as possible for the agency to fill out. Yeah, it took me about a year to engineer that. And I think towards the end, there were so many papers on the wall. It looked like I was brain man or something. Yeah. It was <laughs> getting FBI real would have came in, you guys would have been in huge trouble. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> so, so let's talk about from like the, okay, now we've, we've generated these policies. Um, let's talk about how you actually implement them into a website. So once you have all these generated, how do I get them on my website to where they're always going to be kept up to date? Yeah. So once you finish the questionnaire, um, and I should note, you can always come back to the questionnaire and change the questions. You know, things change. Maybe you turn your website from e-brochure to e-commerce. You can go back and 
change out the questions. Um, but once you submit your a questionnaire, you're then taken to a, an embed code. And that is what you actually copy. And then you go to your website, you add a new page like privacy policy page, and you paste in that embed code. Click update or save, whatever. And then in your footer of your website, you add a link to your newly created policy page. By it being an embed code, what happens there is that we at Termageddon still control what that content, what that copy displays to the world. And that is very valuable because now we, when the laws change, can automatically push updates. And we'll send you notifications, you know, hey, we made this change and so forth like that. So, But it's the embed code that really makes it really valuable um, to the client base. Yeah, so I guess if people want to look at what it looks like, you don't mind if I give out the URL for, I mean, they could find it. So they can just go to theadminbar.com forward slash privacy hyphen policy, and you can take a look at what it looks like. And that's exactly what we did is just took the embed code. We use Elementor on the site. We threw in a, a HTML widget there, pasted it in, press save, we're done. Uh, that's all we ever had to do to get it on the site. And so long as we don't make actual changes to our policy, all that's being kept up to date all the time. Right. Yeah. And you could even do a little CSS to style it and override the default styles. Um, but yeah, that's awesome, man. Um, love it. Yeah, no doubt. So let's talk a little bit about uh, how we can actually take something that now we understand is really needed on our websites. How can we make money off of this? So you said $4. Question. Yeah, $4 when you're an agency and you have this bulk discount rate. So how do you envision, you know, you, you, were an agency owner. So how do you envision actually using this to build some recurring revenue for your, for your company? Yeah, absolutely. So um, <clears throat> because it's required by law, it makes it very nice uh, when you're presenting yourself that way and then saying, not letting it be an optional feature. You know, a lot of agencies were like, oh, I love this. I love this program. I'm going to make it an add-on to my hosting and maintenance. I'm like, okay, well, that seems to conflict when you say it's required by law. You know, maybe you want to consider like putting that together. So I would just say stay stay true. If if you're if you're preaching the importance of this stuff, don't like don't back down from just you know being yeah you need this and, and you're going to tell me that you're choosing to opt out of having a privacy policy. And I think that's mentally the right way to go about it. Is like that's that's how we need to proceed in this world of data privacy becoming more and more important. Um, so. The way the sales work um, is that the web agency has access to wholesale prices where they can buy installs at $4 a month or $38.40 a year. They can sell it to their clients for any price they want. They can absorb the cost and put it into their maintenance plans, whatever. But what I would like to share is some of the success, like some of the successes I'm seeing. Um, it seems like every agency that registers, they're, they're selling it to their clients that they're currently building websites for, and they plan to even put it into their proposals so that when they're sending out proposals to prospects and they're talking about, yeah, of course I quoted out in setting up and implementing a privacy policy onto your website, they're going to have that competitive advantage over a competitor who didn't disclose at all that privacy policies are required by law. I mean, you're going to look like a rock star if that's how you're coming into the presentation. Um, so it seems like agencies are not having an issue selling it to their existing clients that they're building websites for, and they certainly have plans for the future. So I covered present and future, but I haven't covered past. And that's one of the most interesting things um, that I've experienced um, is that so many web agency owners have been like, you know, Oh man, I I'm gonna go talk. I'm gonna go talk to all my clients in the past. You know, I got 200 clients. I'm gonna set them all up, and then like I follow up with them in like three weeks, and and they're like, I haven't gotten any of that done. Right after we got off the phone, you know, a client was a fire happened or something like that. So, um, and I'm sitting there. I'm like, of course, like that's exactly what would happen to me too. I'd have a nice phone call with Hans, and then I'd be like, I'm gonna do this, and then and then running a web agency happens, and then you've. Right. Then it goes further and further into the back burner. So I actually created a program called the Retro Sales Program, um, which is a is it's a it's an attempt to help agencies sell their clients of the past with minimal investment of time on the agency's part. Um, and I would like your guys' honest feedback. We've now done it about ten times, and it's it's getting fantastic results. Uh, but the way it works is the web agency uploads their client list that they want to reach out to into our email sequencing tool. Um, and then they approve the email sequence we want to send out from their email address. And it, it's and they can change out the wording however they want. Um, and then we send out a campaign on clients 
um, from the agency owner's email. And uh, the call to action is to get people to register. And, and what's special about it is that through this retro program, we offer to have Termagun and sales or Termagun support reps take their clients through the setup process. So this is just one less thing the agency has to do. We will actually take all the clients that sign up from the, your past clients. We'll take them all through the setup process and then give you the web agency, the embed codes to put on the client website. So what these agency, what about 50% of the agencies are doing it this way, the other 50 are not, but when we send out that sequence, we sign up these clients, the web agency is um, charging a setup fee in addition to the license. So when the client, when Termagun reaches out to the clients after the email sequence goes out, the Termagun support rep signs them up. That means the client's paying us at Termagun, the annual fee. So we're just not even have to deal with the agency uh, doing the dashboard purchases. We then give the embed codes to the web agency who then they charge an hour of their time to input the embed codes onto the website and style it um, and then put it into the footer. So to put that in perspective, let's say you have 100 clients and your hourly rate's $100 an hour and you're charging a one hour setup fee. Well, we take care of all the questionnaires, get all the policies created and give you the embed codes. And you get $36 a year from us with this, with this program where the client pays us and then we pay you $36 a year for every client. In addition, you have you just got, you know, let's say we signed up all 100, you're going to get the 100 embed codes to put onto the sites and you're going to take $100 for each one. So you can make 10K just copying and pasting embed codes and styling them plus $36 per year per client. So that's an extra 3,600 and that's paid out every year. So if you do this in June, that's like every June you're going to get an extra 3,600 bucks, which is awesome. Um and then, yeah, so th that is the program, the retro sales program. That's one that requires, like, you get on the phone with me after you register. We'll talk about it and get you, I'll get you all set up and, and feel good about it. But that is one that's really hitting off because as much as the web agency wants to reach out to their clients in the past, they just don't. And, like, that's cool, man. Like, it's better to accept that and think of <laughs> solutions than, like, try to pretend you're still just going to follow up one day, like, uh, on, one magical I'm day. On. <laughs> so, so yeah, the agencies are using the retro program for the clients of the past, and then they're using their dashboard um, to sell their clients in the future. And it seems to be doing well. Hmm. Yeah. And I mean, that sounds exactly like what happened to me. Like I said, okay, from now on, starting at this day, this is always going to happen going forward. But I was kind of worried about that kind of like having to eat crow going back to my past clients. <laughs> well, I know I told you I sold you something good, but actually crow. I kind of screwed up and we need to go back and fix it. And I need you to give me money for it. You know, so that has, I mean, that's just the honest concern with going back to, especially clients that I, I do have an ongoing relationship with, uh, though I haven't fully thought it out. My plan is to just implement those and kind of uh, grandfather them into to a plan because I feel like that's, that's my mistake for not making sure I at least inform them about it. You know. Well, yeah, but I'll, I think it also would be um, you can't predict the future. No one can. Sure. And like data privacy has gotten more important. Um, you know, it, it's crazy to think three years ago we should be like, oh, you need privacy. It's just a different landscape nowadays, you know. So, so I would say um, definitely don't beat yourself up uh, for clients of the past. I would caution you to implement it into your maintenance program and just absorb the cost. Like as much as I want to make money, like I, I don't know, there's like the client deserves to pay for this. Like they are getting a solid service. And what's cool with our email sequence is we very carefully word it uh, so that the agency actually looks like, no, 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 they made no mistake. They're on top of this stuff and they are here for your safety and your protection. And that's, you know, and, and so we, we, we very, we very smartly worded the email sequence to make it look like you are just on top of your stuff. And, and that's, that's why I like that retro program because it, relieves i hope a lot of that stress that you just kind of expressed yeah, yeah that's awesome if anybody should be beating themselves up it's congress you know because before any of this we didn't have a single presidential candidate even think of the word privacy and now everybody's like we're gonna break everything up you know and yeah. we're gonna make every law for every state instead of doing something smart and doing like a general federal law so that people could actually follow it you know, so it's not the agencies, it's not the consumers, and it's not, it's really not anyone except for our legislature that should be beating themselves up for not caring about this for decades on end. Yeah. So um, how, how often is it, is it typically updated? 
So we we're not able to predict how many times a year it's going to update. That's just it's really challenging. But what I can say is that like the last three months, I think three states have added um, proposed bills um, for changes to their policy. So so I if, if I were a betting man, I would guess two to four times a year. Okay. Um, but what that really ends at, I, no one can predict. And that's, you know, there's certainly a, a large part of us that hopes it's like, you know, six, seven, eight times a year. So we have that value offer that we're offering. But, you know, that's what really... you hope. I don't think she's hoping that. Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, <work. laughs> I'm hoping for any of that, let me tell you. Well, I mean, last year we did a major, major update with GDPR. Yeah. Um, so that was the biggest thing that came out last year. This year, there's a lot of states proposing new bills. Now, how many times you're going to have to update is going to actually depend on how many of those bills are passed. Mm -hmm. But January 1st, 2020, the new California bill is going to come into effect. It's a big one. Now, we haven't updated our system for that yet. And I know a lot of, um, not a lot, but some of our competitors are updating their systems for that right now which I think is really not smart because they're not done with the final language of it. So while we could build it out and have you answer a bunch of questions that two months later, you're gonna have to essentially delete and answer all over again, we're not gonna do that because we have to wait until the final language is done. And I know they did some updating to the language a couple of weeks ago, but they haven't finalized it yet, right? So it's, it's between proposed, finalized, and you know final text. We're not going to force you to comply with a law that's not passed. That that just doesn't make sense. Um, so I know there's going to be at least one update later this year. Um, now, the rest depends on what gets passed and what doesn't. So um, one of the reasons that I asked that is that it's just another. So you said that when uh, when this update gets pushed out to all the sites, you guys will contact me as the agency owner and say, hey, this is what we did. This is the changes. And that allows me to then reach out to my clients that have this installed and say, hey, guys, just want to let you know this has changed. Do it in my own voice and then add that uh, that like, you know, last part of the email saying how's business. If it's a client that I haven't spoken to in a while, it's just another way to reach out to your clients and prove that you're being helpful, that what they're paying for is working, you know, that the care plan, everything else that uh, that goes that's involved with that. But, you know, every time I've reached out to, uh, to clients that like really, you know, it's, it's kind of a set it and forget it site that only, you know, takes a little bit of maintenance and they don't need all that much. Typically, when I do reach out to these types of, uh, ty types of clients, I'm not in their forefront uh, of their mind because they don't need all that much. But when I do reach out to them, they say, oh, hey, by the way, I need this done or that done. I just haven't thought of contacting you. So it's yeah. just another way to uh, to promote client outreach. Yeah, I love exactly. it. And you don't want to, you know, sometimes reaching out to clients, like, hey, how you doing? It's kind of <laughs> awkward, you know? It just it's sounded like, shady. Yeah, it's yeah. just weird. It's like, have you got any money? Boyfriend from five years ago, like you in town, you know? So Do I have to know something right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to tell you later, but... Uh... <laughs> But, you know, when you're actually reaching out to people with something that's valuable to them, even if it's, you know, hey, your privacy policy was updated or, hey, here's a new law. Hey, here's an article that I think you might find interesting. It always makes that reach out a lot less awkward. So mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like you're just reaching out to see if they need services. You're reaching out with actual things that are helpful towards them. And that definitely, you know, we're more than happy to be part of that process, too. And you know, give uh, agencies some content that they can share um, with their clients as well. The the other thing I'd like to note is that um, you nailed on the head why we uh, you nailed on the head one really important reason as to why the agency dashboard is so nice is that we can send you the updates and then you can choose how you communicate that to your client base. Love right. that. Um, now I will also know we have the added feature that with every install, you can share access to that specific install with anyone. Mm -hmm. So in case you are the agency owner that does just want the information to flow through, just share the install with your client and then they'll get notified when updates are made as well. Very cool. Yeah. Or you can share the install too. Um, so let's say your client is answering the questions and stuff and let's say they don't know whether or not you installed uh, cookies or cookie tracking or Google analytics, right? 
they can actually share that policy with you and you can just answer that now instead of like having to schedule a call time, schedule a meeting, you know, and, and waste everybody's time going through that. You can just share it, answer yes, and then say done. Hmm. Well, guys, that's I think more so if the client, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say that's more so if the client registers without you guys being involved, then they sure. could, you know, share an install. So this is client friendly too, but in reality, it's, it's, it's very clear, right? When you log in, like the, it's an agency dashboard, like it's built mm-hmm. to have, it's built to hold tons of installs. So. Sure. Well, I definitely think y'all have a complete home run here. I mean, as soon as I learned about it and talked with you, Hans, I mean, I, I told Matt about it right away. Um, and as soon as I implemented, I'm like, I'm, there's no reason to not be doing this. There's not a, really a price barrier. If you're selling a care plan to a, to a client, um, you know, $4 a month is almost nothing. I don't even envision having to raise my care plan prices because I'm charging enough that $4 isn't going to hurt me and I can add that much more value to it. So I think there's there's no like barrier of entry with price because it's priced so well. Um, and the fact that you're going to be able to deliver something most of your competitors aren't and like really help your clients out because in the end, I want to make sure that I am doing right by my clients, you know, so... Uh, I think this solves a ton of problems and is is super easy to use. So I'm I'm really excited to get this episode in everybody's hands so everybody can uh, go sign up at termageddon.com. So before before we wrap this up, do you have any uh, any final pitch you want to tell us or or anything uh, we didn't cover that you want to make sure people know about? Um, I should note, you know, our name is termageddon.com. Clearly, there's a, a spin on that. Like um, we know. Data privacy is like probably the most boring thing ever. And uh, well, not to her. Yeah, yeah so not to her. To, to the web agency owner, to most people. Um, it's just about like, you know, it's horrible. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, so, you know, we, we took a lighthearted approach to communicating this value in the hopes that people actually read what we have to say. So like our blogs, and it's all Donata actually. She's a, not only a fantastic uh, lawyer, but she's also a fantastic writer just in general. So they're actually really funny blogs. So we keep things lighthearted. Um, and that's our approach because when it's all said and done, our, we want to work with web agencies. We're not going to be spending money to be at the top of Google. We want to spend money and give it to web agencies to make recurring revenues. And that's why we have our lighthearted name is like, you know, term get it on, you know, protect yourself before you wreck yourself. You know, they, like we just, we're normal people and we just want to have normal sweatpants conversations with web agencies. What's up, Kyle? I said your sweatpants wearing folk. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> and you're talking to the right demographic. I mean, how many people are, are listening to this or watching this in sweatpants? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the fact that they're clothed, I'm impressed by them. <laughs> exactly. No doubt. Awesome, Matt. You got anything to add or ask before we get out of here? No, I think we covered everything pretty well. Okay, awesome. Well, I really appreciate y'all joining us today. We surprised them. They didn't know they'd be on camera. So uh, (laughs) y'all look fantastic and you did wonderful. So no worries there. Everybody Uh, cleans up well. (laughs) Yeah, no doubt. Uh, So awesome. Well, I know Hans is in the group. So if you want to reach out to him, you're more than welcome to. And, uh, you know, when I did any emailing back and forth or had questions, he was the one that answered it. He's been he's been super great to work with. So no worries. Go get signed up and get your free agency one and see how it works for you. Uh, Definitely let us know in the group how you find it. Um, You know, I actually had a suggestion for something, sent it to Hans and he was super excited to get, you know, some feedback. So I think that's welcomed as well. Well, I mean, yeah, we're since we're you know, an engaged couple, like we are all in on this program. And so to any web agency that does register, like it is so appreciated any feedback you have for us, any insight. And yes, Kyle, Kyle made a a screen share video and sent it to us. That was the first time we got someone to give us a YouTube video. So we were just so happy. And then we're also like, why did that laziness? So (laughs) it was just all around great. And yeah, my email Hans, H-A-N-S at termageddon.com. T E R M A G E D D O N dot com. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on and sharing with us. I, I'm pretty sure you're going to get some signups as soon as this show is live. All right, guys. As a reminder, if this group helps you in any way, the easiest way for you to help us is to share the content, subscribe to our channel, and use our affiliate links. It's all free, it takes little time, and it greatly helps support the show. So for Matt, myself, Hans, and Donata, we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.